Okay guys, we're finally off. First video on Cheshire Fisher for a long while. My apologies for the picture quality. It's quarter to seven on the 31st of January, I think. Um, I say I think because I'm not a Mel Morning person. But we're finally on the way to Horseshoe. The Horseshoe, uh, the Carp Society Lake is going to be our campaign water this year. Um, and it's the first trek down. We intend to go down the Wednesday of uh, the last three weeks, but the weather has just been horrendous, so we've not been able to get down there. But uh, I'm finally on the move today. The forecast was much better, but at the moment the rain's coming in sideways. It's uh, four degrees, it's not looking good. The only thing on in its favour at the moment is it uh, should be a full moon tonight, uh, which will be superb. We all know how good full moons are for big comets, so uh, fingers crossed. But yeah, uh, we'll start off with the obligatory road shot, as all uh, good car videos seem to have on YouTube nowadays. Um, I'll see you when I'm down there. so far has been uh, interesting. It's now nine o'clock. I'm still about an hour away from uh, the uh, destination, uh, from the lake. It's yeah, M5, M6, always a problem. But, as you probably can see, the weather's clearing up. We've got a nice blue sky peeking through. Uh, the rain stopped. So, from a weather point of view, from a fishing point of view, all looking good. Uh, let's hope I get there sometime before Christmas. Okay, so a new era for Cheshire Fisher. You've seen the, uh, the conditions we had to drive down in. Absolutely horrific, well I had to drive down in, absolutely horrific. But we're here, the sun's out, blue skies. It's all looking good. We've been there, done a lap of the place and it's a massive, massive expanse of water. But I think we're gonna plump for uh, peg 20. Uh, a nice so double swim uh, for the night. It really is just a shot in the dark. We haven't seen any fish, so we're, we're going with our gut feeling. Nice margin spots and this nice open on the road back on winter day. So uh, get the kit out and I'll speak to you later. So we're finally set up. I've got all three rods in. Fishing out of pegs 23 and 24. Um, because of the time of the year and because we've now got the uh, the annual permits, we can both fish uh, three rods out of these because they're single pegs. So we're not really sure what we're aiming at, and because certainly for me it's just a 24 hour. I'm, uh, I'm just going with PVA bags, um, a combination of wafters, tipped bottom baits uh, and pop-ups on uh, each of the rods. Uh, apparently there's a clear spot over in that direction, I think it's around about, where are we, here, at uh, 18 wraps. So I fired a, a single out towards that uh, and then the left two are, one towards the tall tree in the middle there, one towards the end of the houses. Um, with PVA bags, crushed krill boilies with a pink wafter and a pink pop-up over the top of them. So, fingers crossed, uh, we'll see what we can do. The, the theory being the middle one and the left one are in a PVA bag, a solid PVA bag, which I'm hoping is settled on top of the uh, the silkweed. 
and uh, when that all uh, melts away that will just sit nicely presented just slightly above the, the weed. Hopefully, I, I stopped them on the cast so hopefully they won't have punched their way down through the water and into the weed. Um, I guess we'll never know unless I have a, a, get a fish on. So uh, yeah, 24 hours, that's the plan, that's my view, absolutely gorgeous. Fishing with the, the old man, with my father, as I probably will be most of this year. Well, certainly as much as possible and uh, so I'm going to sit back enjoy the uh, enjoy the view and hopefully have a fish I'm trying out my new Nash SS4 5 season the indulgence I've got the winter insula the insulated winter shroud on it as well so I'm going to try a night under the stars it should be down to about three or four degrees tonight so if I'm going to get a cold at any stage it'll be tonight I have my brolly and my bivy in the van so I can throw them up if I need to but uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, well, we're starting to lose the sun. We've not seen the sign of a fish so far, but it's not too surprising at this time of the year. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous. The, uh, the winter colours are as you would expect. Traffic noise is a bit, and well, we're on the road bank, so you can't really be complaining about the traffic noise, but it's there constantly. You soon phase it out. Should be, I think it's pretty much a full moon this evening, so the big commons hopefully will be on the prowl. And if we were to land anything, I guess it's going to be in its full winter colour, so it'll be absolutely stunning. But fingers crossed, I can see, I can see down there my bed chair with its uh, winter shroud. I'm going to try that tonight. <laughs> if I get too cold or it starts peeing down, I can always whack me probably over the top, but uh, yeah, that's where we're up to with that. But it's pretty cold. Uh, I think the best it got to was about six degrees during the day and it's uh, supposed to go down to about three overnight so uh, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. Hopefully I'll have something to show you later. Well my dinner's done. I had a pasta and a spicy arabiata sauce and I've got to say when you're out in these temperatures you've got to put fuel on the fire. You've got to give your body something to keep yourself warm with. I feel so much better now. I was a little bit chilly beforehand but yeah, absolutely toasty now, which is superb. I may well look at having something just before bed to uh, keep me warm while I'm sleeping. But uh, yeah, that was good. This is what we're faced with at the moment. Back again, I said I'd stop talking, but uh, anyone that asks me why I come fishing, the, the fishing is good, obviously, but just to be out and watch that full moon rise over the back there is absolutely gorgeous. And for obviously you fishermen that are watching, we're into, uh, into big common territory with a moon like that, aren't we? So fingers crossed, let's see how it goes. Okay, so I said I'm going to uh, sleep under the stars tonight, underneath me winter shroud. Uh, the insulation's superb, I've been in this for about, it was frosty as you can see, it's frozen on the outside. It was frozen like this when I got in. Uh, I've been in it probably about an hour now, and it's still frozen on the outside. Uh, I'm absolutely toasty inside, but the, the heat's obviously not escaping, which is, is absolutely perfect. And uh, despite being freezing out, uh, outside, I'm still warm. Brilliant, brilliant. I'll give you a complete rundown. I'll give you a review of it when we get back. The reason I'm up and out of my pit is... Uh, oh, my right-hand rod. I just had a screaming... Um, what I can only imagine was a, a line bite. There have been pike going backwards and forwards uh, earlier on in the evening, so I can only imagine one of them's hit the line or something that's been chasing has hit my line. Uh, I'm fishing slack line, so they're going down uh, away in the margins. But anyway, I better climb back into my pit, get warm because it's bloody cold out here, and, uh, and see where we go. I'll, like I said, I'll give you a rundown of the, uh, the, the new bed sleep system in the morning. Morning folks, it's almost 8 o'clock now, uh, the rods have stayed silent, I think I, I mentioned last night I had a bit of a uh, line bite on one of them but there's been pike mooching up and down the margin so it could quite possibly have been one of them caught me lying at the rod tips. Uh, but that is the aftermath, I was, uh, it was cold, I was boiling, I was absolutely toasty in there but you can see how cold it was, the, the bag's frozen, frozen solid, it's um, Oh, more to the point, the shroud is frozen solid. I'll just take you through it. This is the, the Nash SS4 uh, five season 
Uh, so it's a four leg, five season uh, with a an overwrap. I've gone for the white boy as well because of my size, but with, with the winter overwrap. Uh, this is the winter overwrap, as you can see. It's waterproof, it's further insulated, uh, <laughs> it, it freezes. Um, and then I've got both of the duvets on, the, uh, both uh, the, the duvet skins, which as you can see are fleecy on side with a baffle in, in, on the, in the side. Then you've got the mattress. And underneath that, we've got the cover over the air mesh. And hopefully you can see that. So you don't get the airflow in and out, which at this time of the year is just a killer. Uh, you're able to zip yourself in there and uh, nicely warm up all the airspace inside. And my pillow, well, you can see where my head's been and it's just frozen right the way around the outside. So any moisture from me breathing out or from the air, because that was pretty much the only bit that was uh, exposed once the, the shroud was over, has, uh, has just frozen on, on, uh, on the surfaces. Couldn't recommend this highly enough. It was, uh, like I say, I was absolutely boiling. Didn't bother with the bivy, I wanted to give it a try. And, uh, and that's the result. One toasty one person inside, one frozen um, shroud and pillow outside. Okay, so as I've mentioned, I focused on the, uh, the insulating properties of the uh, SS4. The comfort is what most people are going to be interested in, I guess, and uh, it's got lumbar support, it's got a really nice, comfortable mattress. The four legs really make a difference for me. The, uh, the extra support that you've got for the leg end of the, uh, the bed is superb. And also, uh, I've, I've had an SS4 for years. I've had a, one of the originals, which was which is absolutely belting. I loved it to bits. Uh, it was just time for an update. Um, but that was the three leg. <coughs> and the legs were also quite short on it. Whereas uh, they, they've gone for a longer leg now and it really can. I mean, I'm six foot six and I can sit on it quite comfortably and get myself out of it quite comfortably without uh, having to crouch. It's, yeah, it's quite sizable. It's quite impressive. So uh, if you're thinking about getting a bed chair, have a look at this for sure. It's an absolute belter. Um, really supportive, really uh, warm, really insulating. If you do any winter fishing, go for the winter shroud as well. Um, it's not cheap, but you, you absolutely get what you pay for. Well worth it. What a morning, what a sunrise. That's uh, right in my face now, so if I'm squinting into the camera in a second, I do apologise. Uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, folks, so, uh, we're rapidly approaching the end of my first session on, uh, on Horseshoe. Okay, folks, so I'm rapidly approaching the end of my first session on, on Horseshoe. This uh, trip today, or the uh, trip from yesterday and today, wasn't really intended as, um, I mean, we weren't expecting to haul. We weren't too worried about the fishing on this particular trip. It was just a, a chance to get up here, get our money paid, check out the facilities, have a walk around the entire lake so that we could get our heads around uh, what Summer Bay looked like, what Winter Bay looked like, what the far swims looked like, the scale of the place. Um, and we did that yesterday, <coughs> had a good walk round. Uh, I'm going to fish for another two hours, it's about 8 o'clock now, uh, I'm going to fish through till about 10, uh, and then a slow pack up and hit the road. Uh, I'm going to wait till then because the, the traffic yesterday was horrific and I don't want to hit the um, rush hour traffic again. But, first impressions of the place, massive expanse of water, I think it's 62 acres, which is far bigger than I'm used to fishing. Um, it's very weedy just about every swim you stand in, even at this time of the year, looks carpy. It looks phenomenal. There's some lovely little bays, the margins look good, the open water just looks so enticing. Uh, there's rucks of, of wildfowl on here, the coots, the tufties, the, uh, the ducks, the, uh, the seagulls that are on here. Everything about it just screams uh, natural, screams carpy. It's, it's just perfect. I can't wait to get on here again. So, uh, although I haven't caught yet, I've still got two hours, admittedly, um, I'm very hopeful going forward. Yeah, I can't wait to get back on here. Uh, as you've seen, the, uh, my bed chairs worked uh, perfectly with the shroud. I haven't needed a, a bivy, so um, some of the, the swims are a, a long, long walk. I mean, we're probably talking three quarters of a mile to a mile, some of them, I, I would guess, at a push. Um, 
yeah, probably three quarters of a mile would be the worst. But with a load of kit and bivy and cooker and everything on a barrow, that's a long, long push, more than a, not a long walk. Uh, so not to have to take a bivy now to be able to fish with that bed. And admittedly, it's a heavy bed. It's a big uh, lump, but without having to take a bivy, uh, that will cut down the weight massively, which will really, really help. So I'll be able to push that round there and uh, know that I haven't got too much or I'm not going to have to make a second trip, which is superb. For now, I'm going to sign off. Um, if you haven't been down to the place, come and have a look at it for yourself. It is a, an absolute beautiful lump of water. I have to join the Carp Society, uh, and then I think the ticket's about 400 for the year. Um, but that gives you the, the key gives you access to 84 7 you don't have to come on like day ticket um, anglers do when they only when the gates are open um, there's other things like you can fish um, three rods in certain swims sorry three rods in the single swims you've got a few advantages over the day ticket anglers but um, I can't wait I can't wait it's first day of February today so we've got all the way through um, 11 months of 2018 and January of 2019 to really give this a good try. It's a trek for me, so I don't know how many uh, whether I'll carry on next year, but uh, I certainly intend to give it a lot of sessions down here this year and really put my all into it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, have some of the beautiful 20s and maybe one of the 30s out of here. We'll see how it goes. Till next time, get out there, out there yourselves, wet your lines, and ha ha have a good uh, a good go at it and tight lines. Uh, just in case anyone's interested, I've been fishing a combination of sticky krill boilies and uh, boilies from a bait company called RW Baits. I'll put their details up and I'll be showing you their baits as the year goes on. Um, so hopefully that'll do the business for me. I've been on, on blackjack uh, today. I've also got some uh, banoffee and, um, and um, crushed tiger to try. won't be trying them on here, of course, because there's no, uh, a no nut rule. Uh, but uh, certainly the blackjack um, in these colder months. And then I'll be looking at some of the other uh, fish meal, maybe the uh, uh, spicy shrimp and or spicy krill and sand crab uh, for later on in the year. But we'll see how it goes. Until next time, like I say, get out there, wet your lines and uh, tight lines when you're out there. One last look at the lake. If you've liked what you've seen, you want to see more of Horseshoe and at my... Uh, attempts to catch some of the uh, inhabitants please don't forget to uh, subscribe on YouTube and if you subscribe don't forget to hit the little notification bell to, be, so you, to make sure you don't miss out on a second and if you can like comment on some and subscribe on Facebook that would be fantastic see you soon